Hello, this is Manesh Patel from IMTF Trade. Today is October 11, and we're going to give you a market update because it seems like everyone's panicking out there uh, from the U.S. markets to globally. Um, not quite sure why everyone's panicking. Remember, in order to have good, healthy trends, you got to have uh, some really good major pullbacks that occur every so often. That way you have a good reward risk. And this is a pullback, a major pullback that's undergoing right now. Uh, which is really healthy, believe it or not, long term. Um, not sure why this caught everyone on surprise. We've been posting over two weeks now and just been warning people uh, on the market direction and so forth. Um, so let's go through and let's quickly look at what products you need to look at in order to look at what's going on with the market and where it's at today. This is a VIX index for the U.S. stock market. This is one of the main products we look at in order to forecast the stock market, the entire stock market from the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, and Russell, and so forth. And it's a very accurate predictor, and it kind of helps us too. And you probably see me posting on those social media and also YouTube videos on this uh, every month or every other month, on uh, especially when key market events are occurring. <coughs> um, what you've seen here, and remember, the VIX is inverse relationship to the stock market. So if the VIX goes up, the stock market goes down. If the VIX goes down, stock market goes up. And you could see here that what we did was see these blue lines here. This was the consolidation pattern that was basically the VIX was consolidating with within. So whenever we reached the resistance here, we would start looking for bullish trades on 60 minute time frame and higher on specifically breakouts. Okay, so basically what we were expecting was a bounce whenever we hit this resistance here. And if the breakouts triggered, then we know the market's going to go up and we'll basically trade it either to the middle of the consolidation, which is right here, or to the bottom. Most of the times it's to the bottom. And then whenever we reach the bottom here, at that point what we're doing is we're looking for bearish trades breakout on 60 minutes or higher. By doing that way, you did you did a high probability of success in trading because only the uh, bearish trades that are really going to trigger, and when the market's ready to go, they'll trigger there. And also the ones that are weak to go down first will trigger too. <clears throat> One of the things also we did is is that when you reach the support here, at that point, a lot of your bullish trades should be really profitable. A lot of them should already be at 3 to 1 reward risk ratio. If they're not at 3 to 1 reward risk ratio, we're pretty much closing out those positions uh, and taking profits there. The reason why is the market's at an all-time high and the VIX is at a major support. Those bullish positions should be really into a 3 to 1 reward risk ratio. If not, they're weak and at that point, you want to take them off your portfolio. And you could see here that we reached this support here, September 17, uh, and then uh, again, then we went back to the middle. And then when we bounced off that middle resistance and came back down here, at that point, we kept on making new all-time highs. And you could see here that you kept on making all-time highs here over and over and over, but we never could sit there and break these little, a lot of these small minor supports here, which is not good at all, okay? Uh, and the key thing here is is that when the markets are making all-time high, your bullish positions already should be 3 to 1, and you're just sitting back, tightening up your stops, and collecting your profits. At that point, there's nothing really you could do. Trying to find new bullish positions is not great. reason why is the reward risk is limited, on the, especially on the reward side. So the key thing is to try to find bearish trades to hedge your bullish portfolio uh, as, as, and also to kind of give you an idea when the markets are going to go for a major pullback. So all throughout the zone, whenever we went below the support here, we are always were looking for counter trend bullet, uh, bearish trades. And, you know, when we say counter trend, they're even going to go for a major pullback uh, or a, a trend reversal. And that's exactly what we've been doing. We posted a lot of things like Macy's, LH, and stuff like that on social media. So those are some of the instruments uh, that we looked at. Um, you could see here we bounced off the support here. Uh, we broke this middle of the consolidation pattern very fast within one bar. And remember, this is a daily chart here. That's very unusual. And you could see there was no resistance at all here. And at that point, we just pretty much kept on going, 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 going. There's some signs of hes hesitation here, but not much. And you could see here on this day right here, and let's zoom in a little here, 
you had a multiple time frame cross here, a multiple time frame support right there. And that was a very, very good clue that this market's still gonna sit there and go down because the VIX was gonna go up. And you could see the next day we had the VIX go drastically up, get to our breakout level here and moving forward. Now, we do have an overextension here on the VIX, which is pretty interesting to go. Let's go to the weekly time frame, look backwards in history and see exactly where the next major resistance is. So here's the weekly time frame here, and you could see everything that was on the daily right there. There's the three zones right there. And you could kind of see right here, this is where we're at. We're almost at the bottom of the Ichimoku cloud, but let's go find some multiple time frame resistance uh, crosses, which are critical. And you could see here, there's a cross right there. Price never got there, but look how price respected that level right there. And you could see that multiple time frame resistance right there. And you draw a line there, and you could see that the VIX today went all the way to that level and kind of held it. So that's the next critical level there. If we break that level, believe it or not, the next one uh, you're going to get to is way up here at 29, uh, which is really, really dangerous, uh, as you could see from here. And we'll look at the market uh, futures in just a moment, but you could see that's the next major level there. Uh, and you could go all the way back down, uh, all the way to the past, and that's the next major level. Let's now look at the E-mini S&P 500 futures and see exactly where it stands on the weekly time frame. Then we'll look at the Dow and the NASDAQ. But we always look at the S&P because it has a lot more instruments in there compared to NASDAQ and Dow. And it's, um, you know, it's not as biased technology-wise uh, compared to the others. Okay, here is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. You could see here pretty much this is the trend that we've been going through. Um, and let me mark off. You could see the next multiple time frame support is roughly about right there. That's the first uh, cross right there, uh, almost right there. And you could see it right there. And you could see that we almost hit it. We missed it probably within a couple of ticks here, so far here. So that's a good base right now. And you could see the Ichimoku Cajunsen is right there. So there's a high probability right now that we're going to sit there and try to hold this level here. Doesn't mean we're going to bounce off there and start to go back up. I think what will happen is, and normally what should happen is, is that if you notice here when we had this big red bar here, you kind of base around that level there and then slowly start moving up. That's very healthy. If you start seeing this market go drastically up within a day or a week, that's not good either. Uh, so we're kind of predicting that to be right there. That is the major support level for the E-mini S&P 500 futures, and this has to hold. If it doesn't hold, then there's high probability that this thing is going to go to the bottom of this cloud here, this black line here, which is the next major support right there. And you could see it's right there. And if that happens, it's going to be drastic here. Um, believe it or not, just coming here to the green line, we're still not going for a major pullback at all. We got to get to those green dots, if, and then once we get to those green dots, it basically increases the probability of success uh, to go bearish. So in summary, this pullback is actually healthy. I know it's drastic for a lot of people, but it's needed. Uh, it's kind of the period here at the beginning of the year that we went through. Uh, the question is how long it'll be and so forth. We do have a timing element uh, around October 16 where the markets possibly will bottom out uh, and then start to move upwards. Uh, but we have to look around the 16th, which is next week. Uh, and it's also option expiry here in the U.S. for stock options. Let's go now look at the NASDAQ. Here's the NASDAQ here, which was leading the market supposedly. Uh, but you could see here we're actually below the green line, which is not good at all. And if you look backwards, there's no real major multiple time frame supports at all, uh, which is kind of worrying. Uh, and the, the first one you actually see is way, way down here, uh, which is not good at all. Um, and you can kind of see some stuff here, but there's a lot of, ma this is kind of like a little major support, roughly about right there. Uh, so that's the next major support you could see here, and that's very close to the crosses right there, uh, which is not good at all. Um, so I don't really see any level here on the NASDAQ at all uh, for it to being a support. That's one of the reasons why I'm looking at 
the S&P to sit there and uh, maybe lead us out of this right now, not the NASDAQ. I know a lot of people are heavily into technology and think that's it. But remember, uh, technology has kind of led us out of the financial mess, and uh, it's going to be the first one to go when the markets finally do decide to reverse completely. Um, and you kind of seen that here on the weakness side, and the reason why is a lot of people made a lot of money, and the market market sit there and start to go down. They're going to sit there and take profits on their biggest trade winners, which are there and protected. Okay, so let's go look at the Dow and the. Here is the Dow mini futures, and you can see it's crossed multiple time frame supports right there green lines right there so you do have a, a weekly support there not a multiple time frame one so the Dow is kind of holding up kind of like the S&P 500 futures uh, which is there it was strong notice one thing here while all the other markets were making all-time highs this one did make an all-time high but the next week it did not follow through at all uh, which is not a good sign and that was another clue a lot of people had especially here on September 24th and then here again October 1st so you could kind of see weaknesses in the Dow and we always talked about for months uh, to kind of see the markets making all-time high on the uh, S&P um, and all uh, NASDAQ and also even the Russell keep on making all-time highs but the critical critical question was going to be is when the Dow did get there and reset the uh, get to its all-time high right there and break it what will happen to the market and you could see that this week we broke it in the following two weeks in three weeks now uh, we pretty much have slided which is not a good sign at all so the critical part here is watching this Dow and see what happens because it was the laggard but it's kind of the indicator that's also telling you that the markets had a high probability to reverse at that point because if the markets are all good all of them should be making all-time highs at all the time let's go look at the um, uh, Russell now you could see the Russell here is drastically going down its support level believe it or not is going to be way down here uh, there's a level there and then actually there's a this is the critical level way down here so that's the key level there so you could see the Russell took a bigger hit than anything out there and the reason why remember it was always lagging when the technology sector took off that was a laggard and then it finally started catching up uh, at the beginning of this year you could see when it started breaking out it's making all-time highs uh, but you know the critical ones we're looking at right now is the products are going to be the VIX uh, S&P and the Dow uh, which are the three main products we're going to be looking at to kind of see where the bottom is for this pullback and then go from there if we continue to keep on breaking that S&P support uh, that we outline then we will go for a major pullbacks across the board uh, in all the markets which uh, you could kind of see that the uh, Nasdaq the Russell uh, are already going for a major pullback but the Dow and the S&P uh, futures are still not doing that yet uh, so we'll have to see exactly what goes on if you guys have any questions you could email us at info at eiicapital.com if you guys want to learn more about the IMTF indicator all you have to do is go to imtftrade.com, register for free, and there's a lot of online tutorials there for you. Thank you, and have a good day.